nesters welcome back to the channel today we're going back to goodwill to see what we can find for vintage treasures and other things we'll see if i can find anything to resell or add to my personal collection and yeah let's go ahead and check it out i probably would have snagged that vintage lady there but her arm had been re-glued on it and you could tell quite obviously but yeah i like to check out the books as usual and there wasn't a very large selection today but i did find one that i liked now they actually had quite a bit of Pyrex at my Goodwill tonight. This one is Early American. They were asking $20 for it, which I think is a little pricey, but given the size and the cover, you know, that's one of the more fair prices on Pyrex. If you're going to ask $20 bucks for it, it should be at least that size and have the cover. I've been running across a lot of this anniversary stuff lately, and 20th anniversary was kind of interesting. I've never seen one in that I have been with my husband for 13 years. Let me know below how long you've been with your significant other. Now I've actually seen this pink Pyrex here at this Goodwill for quite a while. They've changed the price down to a dollar because I think they realized it was not going to sell. I think they had something crazy on it like 10 bucks and it is severely damaged now. I will say I picked this one up because I got it for 75 cents and I looked at it as a project piece so I'm going to try some peek on it, maybe some Bars Keeper Friend and we'll see how it comes out. I don't think it's going to get the shine back too much. I wanted to rescue it because I knew it would probably end up in the garbage and I'm just going to try to use it as a planter. They had two of these Autumn Harvest nesting Cinderella bowls. The handle was quite worn as you can see on this one. They were only asking six for that wasn't too bad. I don't think that one had any real damage other than the wear on the handle. This one they were asking 13 for. It had some wear on the handle plus there was a couple chips I had found in it. If it wasn't for the chips I probably would have picked up the larger one but I don't grab Pyrex with chips in it usually. I feel like this Lustaware teacup and saucer set has been here for a little bit. I do kind of like the way it looks. They were asking three dollars for it. And I don't think they go for a whole lot, maybe $10 online. Now they had a bunch of Fiesta wear here. I do collect Fiesta wear myself, but they were asking $5 each. Now I think that meant for the plate and then another $5 for the cup. So had it been $5 for the cup and saucer, I think that would have been reasonable, but they were asking it for individual pieces. And that seemed a little bit high considering that's what you could buy new. Some more falls graft down here. It's something I tend to stay away from. There's just so much of it around. This set I thought was kind of pretty, but a lot of random pieces and several of them were chipped, unfortunately. So I didn't even bother to look them up after I saw <laughs> that it was chipped. You guys know this is one of my favorite sections to always check out. They had this krill piece here, and it's this little basket of fruit I guess and it was kind of interesting and they had a few other pictures today but not a whole lot I spied this hobo painting this hobo clown painting down just a little ways and someone snagged it before I went over and got it likely would have bought that so I was kind of disappointed there and that was my one thing that got away from me I guess so I've actually picked up signs like this in the past with this saying on it. I think people like to put them in baby nurseries. I usually grab them from anywhere from $1 to $3 and then I can usually resell them for around $15 to maybe even $20 depending on the size. So that's a good thing to look out for. The Santa was actually not a stained glass, it was a plastic and it had these weird markings that's kind of hard for you guys to see but they would not have been able to come out so I decided I had to leave that behind. I really like this picture here with the golden retrievers on it. I always wanted a golden retriever when I was a little girl. Punky Brewster was one of my favorite shows and she had Brandon, a golden retriever, and then of course Full House had a golden retriever. Uh, I believe that dog na name was Comet and I have yet to this day to get one but I've always had dogs and they've always been kind of mutts and mixed bred so you know they're still super fun but maybe someday I'll get one. Now they kind of faked me out a little bit with this. I thought it looked a little bit on the older side. I figured from at least the 1980s, but then when I got to the back cover there was a TJ Maxx sticker on the back of it, so I don't think it was very old at all. 
And so this is set up for kind of a baby nursery kind of style items. I thought this carousel was kind of interesting, but I wasn't sure who would actually decorate with a carousel. I know horses are kind of a thing, but I'm not sure if people really do the carousel thing anymore. I know I had an aunt that used to collect the kind of figurine carousels when I was little in the 90s, but... And then I found this Sleepy Owl musical figurine. I'm not quite sure. I think some of it is missing. The bottom had kind of a weird place that was hanging off as if something was, you know, chiming or something on the bottom of it, but it was super cute. You guys that are subscribed know I just picked up some of these Corel bowls at a yard sale recently. They are in the jasmine pattern. Some Pokemon fan out there is going to be super mad at me that I left this behind. It was definitely unusual, but I just didn't know who would actually use this. I don't know. I'm sure there's a person for everything, right? So they were asking $8 for this set of four butterfly gold Corel plates. And not entirely unreasonable at $2 a plate, but I think $4 is a much better price for a thrift store. I think that's a little bit more reasonable. So I had to laugh at the price tags all over this. I have no idea what was going on. There was a $5 one on the back, then a $2 one, and a $10 one on the front. So who knows what the original price was on this. It's kind of insane, really. And I wouldn't even begin to want to take that up front and see what they had to say about that. <laughs> I was kind of bummed out. I wasn't able to get this cup and saucer set because I did end up finding a chip on it after I looked it over a little bit more carefully. I had it in my cart for a little bit and then I checked it over. It is a Sheffield Serenade pattern and they do sell for a decent amount. The cup and saucers maybe not as much as the plates and whatnot but I was still definitely bummed I couldn't pick it up. I really do like that pattern. They had a ton of the Courier and Ives blue set here, and I believe it's called Royal Blue. Now, I looked through all of these because some people do enjoy these, and you know, you can get an okay profit on them, but most of them were unfortunately chipped. I picked up the ones that were not chipped, and we'll see how they do, but yeah, it took me a little bit to go through those, and I was disappointed that so many or probably heading to the dump. They had these Old Town Blue Corel plates here, and this is probably the third most popular pattern out of the Pyrex compatibles. You're more than likely to come across the butterfly gold. I absolutely love this platter here. I was so disappointed. There was a huge chunk taken out of it. It was chipped on the side there. Had the chip been on the bottom, I definitely would have picked it up, but it was on, you know, the surface of the top, so I had to leave it behind, but it was such a nice platter, and I really liked this pansy floral cup. I wasn't sure exactly what it was supposed to be used for, maybe even a soup bowl, but I thought it was really stunning. I 
I really did think this was quite a pretty set. This is from 1988 and it's some kind of a China Pearl brand. I'm not really sure about it too much. I did take a chance to look this up in store. I don't always look up items, but I wasn't sure on that and where I did think it was kind of pretty. I thought maybe it was sought after, but I didn't really find too much about it. And so I did end up leaving it behind. Here's some more Avon stuff popping up. I didn't even know that Avon made plates, but apparently they did. This was from 1978, I believe, and it's absolutely gorgeous. When I looked this up, they do make napkin rings and salt and pepper shakers and stuff like that. So I thought they only made like lotion and beauty product items. So that was kind of new to me. I found this amber glass footed bowl here. It has a spiked hobnail pattern and I thought that was very interesting. I've never seen this one before. I really like picking up the 1970s speckled painted ceramics, especially the frog sponge holders. They're great sellers for me. I really like the soap dish and you guys know I like me some green and blue. Make sure you hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. That lets me know that you like to see more content like this for me in the future. And make sure that you are subscribed if you want to see part two to this thrift along with me. I was there for a little bit today because it is a larger store. So yeah, if you want to check that out, hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye!